All right, guys. This is my first video on the Nikon ZF. I just picked up the Nikkor Z28 F28. As I, fuck. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Wesley. First things first, let's show the nerd stuff. Check this out. Cool Darth Vader workout shirt. I'm going to Disneyland next week with my daughter and my fiance. So what's more fitting than that? I just built this bad boy too. Focus Nikon. I get my face out of the picture. To go in my collection. But today I wanted to talk about why Nikon, what's in my wedding kit and what do you need to get started with wedding photography in a Nikon system. This will be similar in, in other systems as well. I just have Nikon examples. You can find these uh, lenses with Canon, Sony, Fuji, as long as you take in the crop factor with Fuji. And I can go into that if need be. So why Nikon? First off, if you've listened to any of my other videos, you know that I started actually on Sony. I went from the Sony system. I tried Canon a little bit, didn't really like it. So I ventured into Fuji. I was on Fuji for a couple of years with the X-T4, X-Pro3, the X-H2, and the X-H2S, and the, and the X-100V. And then I went into Nikon shortly thereafter, after I shot a few weddings and wanted that full frame depth of field and low light performance. And when looking at different camera models, I just felt like the Nikon ergonomics were, were where they needed to be, which is brings me to my first point. Why Nikon? Ergonomics. Ergonomics, build quality, color science. They have really good affordable lens selection. Even their higher quality glass, the S glass is in my opinion, a lot more affordable than some of the L glass with Canon and some of the GMs with Sony. Let's get started into what you need to get started with wedding photography. You need two bodies. You're gonna have the two cameras. You're gonna need one that's gonna have a wide angle lens on it and one that's gonna have a portrait or even a, a zoom lens on it. You just need a wide angle and more telephoto lens. And you need them at the same time because you're gonna want wide shots and close up shots. You can do this with a zoom as well, but I really prefer primes. I like the depth of field that, that the primes give you, that creamy bokeh or bokeh, you know, however you feel like pronouncing it. I feel like you need a prime and a, and a zoom. Uh, I choose to use the telephoto prime and a zoom that covers the 24 millimeter with a wide angle side of things, as well as the will zoom in as needed. Uh, mine goes to 120. So let's get started to what I have and what I would recommend. Like I said, two camera bodies, and I, those camera bodies need to have dual card slots too. If you have a memory card fail on a wedding day and you lose all your pictures, all of them, that's, that's bad news bears for everybody. The bride and groom are gonna be highly disappointed and you're gonna to have to give some refunds. So make sure your camera body has two memory card slots. I'll show you some examples. Hopefully the audio doesn't change when I put my mic down here. This is my first camera body. I, I have a Nikon Z8. I love this camera body. The autofocus is top notch. The ergonomics are top notch. It's a little heavy, but it supports lenses like this one, this 24 to 120 F4 lens. Now, a lot of people will tell you, you need to get the F2.8 version of this. But I've found with a full frame sensor and with a good flash, you don't need the F2.8 version. When you need that uh, faster prime, you go in, you go to your prime. When you need that faster aperture, you go to your prime. So and like I said, two card slots. If you look right here, two card slots. There you go. So first and foremost, you need two camera bodies. You don't need an Icon Z8. You can get by with a 24 megapixel sensor for weddings. You don't need a 45 megapixel sensor. If you do choose to go into a 45 or 50 or 60 megapixel camera, just know that you're going to deal with bigger files. There's These files can be upwards to 85 megabytes and you're gonna need a computer that can process files that are quite a bit larger and you're gonna need a hard drive that can read these files a lot, a lot faster. So be cognizant of that. My second body that I use is the Nikon Z62. This is the first camera I started off on when I got into the Nikon system. And this 50 F18 is the first one that I also started off on as far as a portrait lens. And I still use it today. It makes great portraits. I'll show you some examples along the video here. So two camera bodies, both with dual card slots, 24 megapixels, 
is fine. You make sure that you have a camera with this updated latest firmware and you have the next thing I'll talk about, batteries. You're gonna need at least one battery per camera body to replace. Now these newer mirrorless cameras have larger capacity batteries and I don't run into issues as much as I used to would have to replace batteries. One extra battery per camera is sufficient. I get about five to 800 shots per camera body with it just going to sleep on its own. I don't ever turn them off unless I'm setting it down for a long period of time. Let's, let's talk about the lenses you're gonna need. Like I said, you're gonna need a portrait type lens. I chose to go with this 50 millimeter F1.8 as my portrait lens because it's, it's wide enough to do full body portraits and also telephoto enough to get those nice uh, nice detail and to do waist up shots as well. And the other body, the other camera lens that I use the most is this 24 to 120 F4, like I discussed before. Constant aperture, you don't wanna get into variable aperture zoom lenses in my opinion when you're doing weddings, you're gonna want to have a constant aperture because you don't wanna worry about when you're trying to achieve a certain depth of field with your aperture it going up when you need to increase your telephoto range. You don't need this to do weddings, but there is another lens that I always bring when I do weddings. And let me go get that. Let me unveil the other lens. And this lens is a nice to have and something you're gonna want eventually, but you don't have to have it right away. And this is the MC 105 macro lens. Now, this lens isn't only for macro photography. It's 105 millimeter F2.8 constant aperture. It is a little slower to focus when compared to the 50 F1.8 or the 24 to 120, but this lens takes excellent portraits. Sharp, 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 sharp portraits. A lot of times in a reception hall, I'll take off the F4 uh, zoom lens and I'll put this on instead and I'll use this to do my close-ups. I'll use the 50 millimeter F1.8 to do my, you know, further shots or, or full body shots. As long as the reception hall is not too tight, you can get away with that. If not, then you're going to want to keep your 51.8 on and your 24 to 120 so you can get those wide angle shots in the reception hall. For speeches, a lot of times I'll definitely switch to this 105 because you don't want to be up in their face while they're giving speeches. You want to be further back and I can get some really cool, creative portraits and, and candid shots with this 105 during the reception. And I'll show you some of those along the video. I'm filming this on the ZF right now. The ZF is mainly my street photography camera, but I really, really want to see how it films. It, it's also likely going to be my filming camera for wedding days as well. Right now I'm using the 28 F2.8 SE lens. I also have the 40 millimeter F2 SE version. And I started off with this one, and I probably would prefer this for street photography, but the 20, it's too tight for filming, so, and for vlogging. And I, and if you listen to my other videos, I actually returned the Z30, just because it wasn't my do-it-all travel camera. I feel like the ZF is gonna be my do-it-all travel camera. And so I got the 28 millimeter F2.8 for vlogging, and the 40 millimeter F2 I'll also bring with me for street photography. I'm hoping this ZF is going to be my new travel setup. I'm going to Disneyland next week. I'm going to take it with me. I'm also going to take it with me when I go to Italy later this year. And I'm going to really put it through its paces then. Do a really long-term review. Probably get back to you on the feedback once I go on a real, real trip overseas with it and see how it works out for me. Anyway, stop rambling. So you need two bodies, two lenses minimum. A macro lens for wedding for ring shots, which I'll show you a few ring shots. I would just highly suggest doing that uh, when you can get the macro lens. Do invest in that. Two bodies in these three lenses and a couple of batteries are really all the camera specific gear you're going to need, minus a flash and a harness. So let's talk about it. I have previously said in my Z8 things I've learned that third party flashes don't work with the Z8 and ZF because of the Xpeed 7 processor. I've been corrected by many of my viewers that the Godox flashes do indeed work, but the batteries do not. So still, you're gonna need genuine Nikon batteries if you're getting into the Z8 or the ZF. If you're going with the Z6 II, you can go with third-party batteries. They just won't last as long. Back to the flash. I have a genuine Nikon flash. It's an SB5000. Let's see if I can... Oh, that probably felt 
satisfying on the video. This is the flash I have, the SB5000. It looks pretty basic, but I'll be honest with you, this the way this flash works, you can get away with just running it in TTL and bouncing it off the ceiling and you'll be fine. Especially with these mirrorless bodies that don't require a ton of light, you'll be fine. You don't have to dial in manual settings on this thing unless you're trying to get creative with your portraits. If you're trying to do basic reception hall photography, put this sucker in TTL, put it on the, a Nikon body and shoot away. Mo oh. Your photos are gonna be exposed properly every time and you're not really gonna have to dial in anything. As the light changes, the DJ lights are flashing all over the place. Using this SV5000 has been a godsend. Now I will say, and I'm sure people are gonna correct me in the comments, but I will say that when I had a Godox flash and a Godox system, which I have them right here for my Fuji, in fact, you know what, let me pull it out. So there's my Godox X Pro trigger. And here is one of my Godox flashes. It's a V350. And I use this on my Fuji camera bodies. So I, I'm very familiar with how to use Godox and Godox flashes. So I, I wanna make that clear. Um, I actually just ordered a Godox flash, the retro flash for the ZF, so I can take it with me when I travel. And I can't wait to show you guys how that works out. And another thing I'll recommend is always shoot raw to both memory cards. Going back to what I said earlier, if you shoot raw on both memory cards and one memory card fails, you're 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 okay. But if you shoot JPEG on the other memory card and it and your and your primary fails, now you got to try to edit JPEGs, and you're not going to be able to bring things like shadows back and and whatnot like you could on a raw file. Let me get to my last thing that you really need for your wedding kit. And this is the really important thing. Don't sleep on this thing. I'm gonna pull it out here. All right, what is this thing? It looks like a bunch of nonsense, I get it. This is a two camera strap camera harness. It goes across on one shoulder and it goes across your body, you'll have one one camera on here, it screws into the bottom of your camera where you where you screw in a tripod mount, and one camera on here. And this right here will distribute the weight across your body so that when you're shooting a full wedding over eight to 10 hours, you're not carrying these and trying, and your wrists aren't hurrying, your hands aren't cramping from carrying camera bodies. And you can carry two cameras on you and using, you're only gonna use one at a time, but it's like you have your little holster and you're just pew, 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 firing off shots. You gotta get a camera harness. This is a cheaper one. They make these nice leather ones that I really want. But at the time when I got one, I wasn't sure if I was really gonna like wedding photography. So I settled on this one. It is a black rapid, and I'll put a link in the description. It's a fantastic harness. I want the leather one, but I don't need the leather one. So I'm gonna stick with this one for now, and we'll go from there. Aside from that, as you can see back here, I have this awesome Aperture Loom Cube type device. I will mount that on the hot shoe of my Z6 or my Z8 at times to provide that enough light for it to focus better in a reception hall. I can change it to Kelvin temperature, I can change the colors, it's full RGB, but right now I have it on green, but of course if I was in a wedding hall, I'd probably have it at something like 6000 Kelvin, 5700 and I would adjust the light so that I have enough fill on the face to get a good clean shot. And then otherwise, if I don't, I'll just use the flash. And then the Z8 will go down the negative 10 EV, I believe, uh, autofocus, just like the ZF here. So I don't think that's an issue. I use that. And then the last thing, this isn't really photo centric. So if you're not doing, if you're doing photo only, you don't need to worry about it. I just picked up these Sarmonic mics and I've been using these to film videos and they've been working pretty good. Aside from that, if you didn't if you didn't want that, you could get one of these bad boys. This is a Rogue shotgun mic. And I used it on a video a couple videos ago and it sounded pretty good. Uh, there was a little echo that I had to edit out in um, DaVinci, but it sounded pretty good as well. I'm looking for a laval lavalier mic for when I vlog on the road. I was previously using a Z30 with the internal mics and I don't want to carry the shotgun mic with me. I might carry these with me when I vlog, but I wanna be able to vlog with the ZF with just a clipped on lavalier, lavalier mic plugged right into the ZF. If you guys have any recommendations on which one to get, let me know. So that's pretty much everything you need. Uh, I don't ever bring my tripod when I do weddings. 
obviously I need one if I'm filming, but if you're shooting pictures, to recap, you need two camera bodies that have dual card slots. You need a couple of extra batteries. You need a, I would suggest a portrait lens to get those creamy, bokeh, gorgeous, detailed shots. And a zoom lens similar to this 24 to 120 or 24 to 70 or 70 to 200, depending on you know what you what you can afford. Any of those type of lenses to get you started. Look at picking up a macro lens when you can, and then get yourself at least one flash. If you can afford two flashes, go with that. Um, Godak, Godox flashes are great. Newer flashes are mm, okay. The Nikon flashes have all been fantastic over the years. So that's about it for this video. I'm sure I rambled for quite a bit. It's we're 20 minutes in right now. I'm gonna have to cut some of this out. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you got any questions about any of these camera bodies that I own, the Z6 II, the Z8, the ZF, or any of these lenses, drop me a comment. I'm happy to respond. Until next week, I will talk to you later. Peace. Man, this ZF like really sticks to my face and my eye. It will not focus on anything else. Peace. I said peace.